Well, good morning and welcome to this week's Market Carver. Boy, do we have a lot going on. It is August, and that means it is the worst part or the worst season, if you can, uh, for the stock market here to about the middle of October in terms of where we are. And we've got all sorts of things that are going on. So the one that just happened about a half an hour before I walked into the studio uh, to make the video for you is Como is resigning from being the governor of New York City. That is going to have some fallout. The Senate has passed the $3.2 trillion infrastructure bill uh, that will come out. Still has to get through the House. There will still be changes made. Obviously, the president will sign it uh, if it makes it through the House. But here's the deal. You know, a lot of us are worried about debt and, and where all of the money is coming from. Just keep in mind, the infrastructure stuff that needs to be done, without question, some of the stuff needs to be done. Uh, the others of us worry about how it's going to get paid for. I get both sides of that. But you still have to have workers to be able to do the work. And just because legislation gets passed doesn't mean that money is necessarily spent. It's going to be very, very, very interesting to watch this. Now, I am excited to be able to see you guys for the thirdly as we have our conversations that are coming up. Uh, we hope to have those in person. Invitations are going to be coming out. But you've probably all heard by now the variant is, uh, is hit, um, it's hit hard in some places. Lafayette, in terms of our Indiana market, probably more so than in other areas. So we'll keep you informed in terms of that. But we're looking forward to having the thirdly and, and having some of these conversations about where we really are inside of the economy and the market. Now, we're going to talk about a few different things today that are a little perhaps off of the normal beaten path. We're not going to talk about bonds or inflation or interest rates. Uh, but what we are going to talk about is just human behavior and really what takes place. So this is a company that we actually own. It's called Danahur. It's in one of our portfolios that we really don't want to sell because it produces capital gains for, uh, for many of our investors. Uh, but at the same time, and I have to tell you, we're still long Danahur. So why in the world would we sell it? If you look at the charts that we show you every week, that is a good looking chart. Notice that trend is working its way up. It's at an all time high. You know, there, there's nothing that you can say bad about it. And you go to the top panel where you see that green, it even means there's more people buying where we are right now. This is one fine stock. Uh, so why in the world would we sell it? And the answer is it has done so well that it climbed to be a, about a 7% of the portfolio. And we believe that there is too many risks to take inside of that, whether that be political risk, whether that be economic risk, whether that be market risk, a CEO making a crazy statement. You know, there's tons of different things that can happen that can go on there. So I don't want you to think that it is a bad company just because we sold the stock. Uh, and I don't want you to think well, we want to pay taxes because you all know me. Uh, that is not the case either. You just need to understand when we go on that field every day to buy and sell stocks, there are different participants for different reasons. And sometimes people try to extrapolate what they want to believe to be true as opposed to what is really true. And the reality is when you have companies that do really, really well, eventually if you follow risk management, you do have to take that some of those profits off of the table just to be able to protect the portfolio. And that gets us to how we make these determinations. Now, uh, you all know Adam. He's the other one who does the market carver. Adam's our chief investment strat officer. Uh, he's one of my partners. He's been with the firm for over 20 years, and he is a CFA. So here's what happened, and you can just see this chart. Uh, the CFA course is you have to take three tests three years apart, right? So it's one year, two year, three year. Uh, it is the highest credential that you can have in the investment world. And little by little, it, uh, the number of people who were passing was starting to increase. And so you, they thought they were ruining the brand. And, and the same was true in the CFP world, by the way, the, the credentials that I have. And so you started to see a little bit of this change. But this is a credential that we have. We invested heavily in it. Adam worked hard to get it. Uh, and it's good to see that that pass ratio is back down to one out of four. About 25% of the people who took the last test actually passed. And, and here's, where you, here's where you get into these levels, right? Uh, we're talking about that being a level one. 
Remember, you got level two and level three. I know many people who took one and never passed and never tried again. So kudos to Adam, uh, but it is important to understand that we are still trying to maintain the highest credentials that we can have out there. The debt ceiling, you're going to hear all sorts of discussion about this. Uh, I, I remember being in this conversation the, back time at, back, the last time I got really serious. Um, I think it was 2011 when it was. And, and one of our families told us, listen, there's politicians, there's bureaucrats. We work for the government. When these people pass bills, sometimes we just stick it to the corner of the desk and we wait anyhow. Um, you know, so it, whether it's a debt ceiling or not a debt ceiling, there's different things that happen in the governmental world that we don't necessarily understand uh, as, as mere workers and things that are going on. This will be a last minute thing again. They'll, they'll hit it. Um, there's a lot of things that I would like to say about it. So if you want to talk about it more at the thirdly, make sure you submit those questions. Uh, we are more than happy to have those to be able to address uh, when we're doing it. Uh, we're going to do the third lay both live if possible. It's, again, that's going to depend on what's going on with, uh, um, with the virus at the time and the variant that's out there right now. Uh, but the other part is we are going to tape it again. So we need you to submit your questions ahead of time so that we know what things you want us to answer as Adam and Aaron and I build our conversation for you. The credit cards and the consumer firepower, you know, credit utilization, that's the amount of um, uh, of, of available credit, if you will, that is actually being utilized. And then you've got the credit card balance, which you can see has kind of been flat. And then you get down to the bottom uh, of where, the, where the, the, the utilization really is. The limits are going higher, right? The balances are remaining equal, and the utilization is going down. Now, this is not utilization in terms of people using the credit card to buy gasoline or to go to the grocery store. In fact, those numbers are still up, according to CNBC, 18% year over year in terms of where they were last year. But it is the amount of credit that's available, the gold line, and the amount of utilization, the amount that they're actually leaving extended out past 30 days that's staying on the card, we've never seen this low. You're going all the way back to 2000. The consumers still have a tremendous amount of firepower. We will talk about demographics in the thirdly, I promise. Uh, and this chart may come back up again then. But just understand, inside of the credit card world, things are looking very, very good. Hey, if you want to know more, you can always listen to our radio show program. Consider this program. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, you can find it. WIBC, Wilo, Shine 99, WHBU. We're back in, in the Anderson market. Uh, but again, a lot of people are listening on a podcast. Happy to have you there. If you've got a question, as you prepare for the thirdly, please do not hesitate to let us know. Have a great week. We'll see you again soon.